especially in, in, in the U.S., Canada, Britain, Ireland, and Denmark. I mean, those are definitely the top, uh, you know, what, the top places where my, my Facebook friends live, uh, you know. Yeah, and, well, and also the main places I tour. Well, That's I know right. you're going to play a few songs for us uh, today, so uh, sure. thank you very much for coming on board. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll have more from David Rovix at the end of the show. He's currently on a world tour which takes in Britain, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Greece, Canada and Australia. Details are on our website and his. Well, if you remember last week, we sent Donny Slack and Warren Biggs to a luxurious retreat in uh, North Cornwall as part of an occasional series to show you how the wealthy are coping with the credit crunch. Here is their exclusive report on how the overweight rich pay pounds to shed pounds. Okay, now automatically when you close your eyes, you start to relax. You shut down one of your senses, so you can find that your mind becomes much more focused. So, last week, we left you with us arriving at New Beginnings in Devon. This week, we're going to show you what we got up to. Let's go jump straight into the deep end. Count down from 10 to 1. You also focus on relaxing your body. Now, how you can do this is when you count the first number, you take your attention down to your feet and then start to feel a warm sensation around your feet. Okay, imagine your feet relaxing. Okay, so just relax. This was my favourite bit head massage. Once they get started, you don't want this to end. Can't say yoga was my favourite thing. And as you breathe in, and when you've had enough coming out nice and gracefully, give your standing leg a bit of a shake. How do you do it? How do you make healthy food tasty every single day? One of the main ways is just by using good quality fresh ingredients. I try to select things that are in season and I haven't had to travel a long way. I use organic produce as much as I possibly can. Yeah, I do give much smaller portions um, which will grow um, during the time that people, people stay and, and maintain this diet. I feed them five times a day. So it's not like you're being absolutely restricted in, in, in your food intake. Halfway, flat out, let's go. Wayne, the dreaded personal trainer. Okay, ready? Nice and wide. The, the people who come and see us are the people who've done every diet, who've tried everything, and who are really frustrated. So they're frustrated with themselves, they know how to lose weight, but they're not doing it and they don't understand why. And that's, that's what we want to make the difference with. But we won't take more than eight people in a week and we interview everyone before they come because if they're not serious about losing weight, then this isn't the right program. And, and we, you know, we want people here who are gonna get fantastic results and who are ready to make a, a real change. Now, the other thing is you started in 2008. So you pretty much opened this place as a recession was hitting. Yes. And was hitting <laughs> the entire Western world. Yeah. Um, what effect did that have? Um, I'm not sure that it had a very negative... Uh, it was scary. Uh, it, you know, I wasn't thrilled to be opening a business as, as a recession was you know, really going into full swing. Mm. Um, but I don't think it made a huge difference negatively for us because actually as money's become tighter for people, people have become more aware of their health and their self-esteem and how they feel about themselves and maybe actually people have started to think of of themselves as being more important than the money. Yeah, yeah. You can see it's a well-worn trail. How um, far away is where it is? Looks the uh, this is John who took us on our hike. Now this is wood sorrel. If you pinch a little bit of leaf and give a chew, Quite refreshing and good if you've got a headache.
and we walked for miles and miles and miles. So, Yvonne, Afshin, I've shown you what celebrities have done, what politicians have done. They come to a place like this, spend two and a half thousand pounds a week at least to get what? Diet control, hypnotherapy, reflexology, gym training, and a healthy diet. This is what happens in the West when you've got the money. Anyway, I don't really need to lose the weight. I'm off to get a burger. See ya. Well, if I had a shed load of money, I wouldn't want to go off on some great hike along a, a cliff top. I'd want more pampering, uh, which they got, but I would still want even more. But uh, all this nostalgia has uh, made me turn my thoughts to our favourite death row correspondent. I wonder how he is. What nostalgia? Anyway, uh, Abu Jamal might be, uh, Mummy Abu Jamal might be confined to a cell in death row. But his dispatches are anything but parochial at the moment. His latest report is on the events in the landlocked Central Asian nation of Kyrgyzstan. Storm over Kyrgyzstan. It began with rebellion in the streets. In a matter of days, opponents of the government of Kyrgyzstan, a tiny landlocked country in the heart of Central Asia, ran the president from his offices and organized an emerging ruling council. President Kurmanbek Bakiev himself came to power after a series of protests charging electoral fraud against the former president, Askar Akayev. 